Bruchem Aboim. Thank you very much for coming. Tonight, uh, again, we're in the uh, Gematria series. We're up to Lecture 21. Now this week we're going to deal with, uh, again, two numbers as we've done in certain lectures. So the first number we're going to deal with is 19, and then we're going to deal with the 19th letter in the Hebrew alphabet, which is the letter Kuf, uh, which is 100, Gematria. So the number 19 in Hebrew, Tisha Asor, is made up of a Yud and a Tet, 9 and 10. Again, 19. We do not find the number 19 used often in Tanakh. The standing prayer, the Amida as we call it, which we refer to as the Shmona Esrei, which literally means 18, uh, really has 19 blessings in it. Now the men of the Great Assembly, the Asher Knesset Sagdola, who composed the prayer, did so with 18 blessings. That's why it's called the Shmon Esrei, the 18. But over the course of time, it became evident that the nation was being oppressed by informers and evil people. So then, the rabbis decided that it was time to add an additional prayer, a prayer which is called Vlam Shinim, and against informers there should be no hope, which was composed by Shmuel HaKotten, this was done as a plea to God to help the nation against such evil people. Now the 19th blessing in the Amida begins with the words Sim Shalom, which means bestow peace, and ends with the words Hamavarech es Amo Yisrael ba Shalom, who blesses his people Israel with peace. Now there is no greater blessing than peace. Without it, all other blessings are negated. The Rambam states, that when Mashiach comes, he will bring no miracles, but he will bring the greatest miracle of all. He'll bring shalom, he'll bring peace to the world. Now, if you add the numbers of the Hebrew alphabet in, in ordinal number, the name Chava, Eve, equals 19. How does that work out? So the eighth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the first letter of Chava's name, which is Aches. The second letter of Vav in Chava's name is the sixth letter of Vav. And the He the f is the fifth letter. So if you add eight, six, and five, you have 19, the gematria of the name Chava. The name of Adam in ordinal numbers is, again, the Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Dalad, the fourth, and the Mem, the thirteenth. One, four, and thirteen equals eighteen. Again, the gematria of the name, Adam. As it said, Adam called the name of his wife Eve, Chava, for she was the mother of all life. Now, the 19th letter in the Hebrew alphabet is a kuf, which alludes to the 19th year cycle of the moon in relation to the sun, which is the basis of our Jewish calendar. Seven out of every 19 years are leap years, when we add another month to the calendar. So that Pesach, Passover should always come out in the spring as the Torah designates. The moon represents the female, fi female figure, the secret of the sphere of Malchut, kingship, personified by Chava, the first woman. The sun represents the male figure, the bestower of light, whereas the moon is the receiver of its light, and in particular, the sphere of Yesod, foundation, as personified by Adam, first man. In addition, altogether, there were 19 kings that ruled the kingdom of Israel that began with Yerub and Ben-Nevat when he took the ten tribes and started the new nation. Now, the letter Kuf, according to the Gemara and Shabbos 104a, alludes to God's Kedusha, God's holiness. As it states in the Kuzari, a book written by Yeshua Ben-Levi, that God is holy in the sense that no being, no being, whether human or spiritual, can be compared to him. There are different opinions as to the makeup of the letter Kuf, how it's written. Some say it's made up of a combination of a Chaf and a Vav, which would have a gematria, Chaf is 20, Vav is 6, so a gematria of 26, which is a name, gematria of the name of God of mercy, the yud ke vav ke, which we don't pronounce. The Kuf is the only letter in the Hebrew alphabet whose normative form descends below the floor of the letters. This descending foot of the kuf below the ground level into the grave, as, as it were, 
hints at the verse that her feet descend into the realms of death. Now, her, her refers to the trait of malchut, kingship, as personified by first woman, Eve, who was responsible for impairing the initially created barrier of immunity between the realms of life. There are those who say that the design of the kuf is similar to that of a hay. Both have three lines, two vertical and one horizontal. These lines depicting the concept of thought, speech, and action. In the hay, though, they represent holiness. In the kuf, they represent klipa, or unholiness. Its long left leg extends beneath the letter's baseline, and it represents one who descends below and violates the acceptable boundaries of Torah. A hundred is the symbol of something that is all-encompassing. It is commonplace to evaluate all sorts of matter by marking them out of a base of 100. The highest level is 100%. And this percent is really from the Latin uh, word root meaning out of 100. That is considered to be the sum total of everything. Now the number 100 is frequently used to portray continuous reputation. Examples of that are a sinner perpetuates, perpetrates pardon me, evil 100 times. A verse from Kohelet 8.12. The command of sending away the mother bird should be done up to a hundred times, based on the Gemara in Chulin 141a. Also, the requirement to rebuke one's friend up to a hundred times when necessary, and then also an attempt to return a lost object to its rightful owner, Hashavas Aveda, as many as a hundred times. Now, in Mishlei 17:10 and 11, it states, "Rebuke frightens an understanding person more than hitting a fool." a hundred times. Psalm 100, Mizmor Lesoda, a prayer of thanks. It was a number, Psalm 100, is also connected to thanks and serving God with joy. Ivdu Hashem B'Simcha. Now before Adam, before first man ate from the eight Sadas, the tree of knowledge, his spiritual stature was termed as standing from one end of the earth up to the heaven. After his sin, one of his punishments were that his stature was drastically diminished to a size of only 100 cubits based on the Gomorrah and Sanhedrin 38b. Symbolically speaking, this meant that the level of Adam sank to now occupy the strict confines of the physical world. The fact that his stature remained at the level of 100, though, meant that his ability to emulate God by living a spiritual heaven-like existence was still possible. One of the most famous associations of the number 100 is the rabbinic institution that obligates each and every Jew to recite 100 blessings every day. This is based on the verse in Akev 10, chapter 10, verse number 12, that it says, Ma, what does Hashem, your God, ask of you? So the word Ma, what, Mem He, it can also be read as Mea, 100. Now, by adding an aleph, uh, again, to ma, ma, to make it mea, this alludes to God, aleph, again, the one and only. There are 99 letters in this verse, but by adding the aleph, the number becomes 100. Now, historically, the command to recite 100 blessings every day was introduced by David Melch, King David. And this was done to counteract the plague that was killing 100 men each day. The 100 blessings offer a protection against the 98 specific admonitions mentioned in the Torah's second admonition to the Jewish nation in the portion of Kisabo. In addition to the 98 admonitions, there was an additional two admonitions that were alluded to under the categories all ailments and afflictions. So two to the 98 equals 100. So the Kuf 100 represents death. But if one recites these 100 blessings daily, then one can transform a negative decree into a celebration of life. Now the Chodushi Arim, the Ger Rebbe, says that we make two meals on all seven days after a marriage, what we call the Sheba Brachas, which equals 14, 14 meals. At, at, and at each meal we say seven blessings. That's why it's called Sheva, seven Brachos blessings. 
7 times 14 is 98, which are to connect to the 98 curses in the portion of Kisavo. However, in the next portion of Nitzavim, Rashi states that there were 100 admonitions, 100 minus 2. So why doesn't Rashi just say 98? And this can be an allusion to the two is Chosten and Kala, a bride and a groom who are the foundation of the Jewish family. If the family is strong and connected to God, then there will be no necessity for the admonitions. Our rabbis tell us that all these admonitions came true in the destruction of the second temple. There are 98 admonitions, which is the same numerical value as the word chinam, which means nothing. So even though the generation had many merits, they could not protect, the, they could not protect them from destruction. The temple was destroyed and the nation exiled because of chinam, nothing, sinas chinam, baseless hatred. We have a belief that the trait of chinam, nothingness, so to speak, will br also bring the Messiah, Shiach, through avas chinam, through baseless love. There's a story in the Zohar that says that each letter of the Hebrew alphabet approached God when he created the world. And they said, create the world with me. First letter in the book of Bereshit. When the Shin made its request, God said, I cannot create the world with you, since you are the first letter in the word Sheker, which means falsehood. And so even though the letter Shin represents holiness, <clears throat> as we see by the fact that it is found in our Tefillin, in Mezuzot, and other things, but it is also connected to the kuf and resh of the word sheker, which spells the word kuf resh is kar, coldness and indifference. It also, when spelled backwards, spells the word reik, which means emptiness. So why would these letters want to connect to the shin? If falsehood does not attach itself in some way to truth, it cannot stand much like Islam and Christianity, connecting to the Old Testament, to our Torah. These hundred blessings correspond to the hundred gates in the higher world. Each of these gates represents the passage through which blessings would be channeled. Yitzchak, we know, was born to Abravinu, Abraham, when he was a hundred years old. Yitzchak was successful in the land of the Plishtim and the Philistines, even during a famine. Torah says his fields produced one hundredfold of crops, the description of this bounty was described in the verse as mea sha'orim, a hundredfold or a hundred gates. All hundred heavenly gates were opened and were used by Yitzchak of Inu, who benefited from this blessing on earth. There were 100 adonim, silver sockets in the Mishkan, as, to, as the base to support the wall beams. Also the dimension of the Hechel, the main anterior chamber of the temple, measured 100 cubits long, by 100 cubits wide, 100 cubits high. The Talmud in Chagiga 9b states that one's Torah learning should be reviewed 100 times. In addition, it states, you cannot compare someone who learns something 101 times to one who learns it only 100, the power of one. In Pirkei Avot, chapter 5, verse number 20, mission number 22, it states, Bimea, Ke'ilu uh, meis, that at 100, a person is as if he were dead. So the question becomes, why would the Mishnah use such a negative description of one who was merited to reach such an old age? So the answer is, it really isn't negative at all. Instead, it means that the person has risen above all worldly matters. His focus and concerns now are solely on the spiritual. So may God bless us with the strength and determination to be able to push ourselves a little bit harder and reach a little bit higher each day. And with that and the trait of avas chinam, baseless love, may we merit to bring Mashiach Sukenu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. Again, God bless and be well. And everyone should be blessed with, again, Lashon Tova, Tikha Sevo, Tikha Sem, a beautiful and sweet year. Thank you so much for coming. Welcome, my boy.